Elsa. Everyone makes mistakes. Without mistakes, how would anyone learn anything? This was told to me by Chaiko Berry, a woman that I met at the SGI Buddhist Women's Conference last Sunday. What she sound resonated deeply within me because I am a perfectionist. It is really hard for me to make a mistake and then get over it and move on. When I make mistakes, I dwell on it. Another thing told to me by my second interviewee, Adair Colby, who is a lead singer to Mantis and Two Cents and a very good friend of mine, when I asked him if he gets nervous before going on stage. He says, no, I don't. I don't think about it because I'm doing something I love. So he told me to step my cookies up, get out of my comfort zone, and act like I love it, and I'll calm down. I don't know how well that's working, but today I'm going to try that. I realize in today's speech, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to read from my notes. I'm not a master yet, but I'm still learning. And I know one day I'll get to that point to where I can get up here and say, I love speaking in front of all of you and in front of anybody else, and I won't have the butterflies or the red face or anything else going on. So let's have fun, make our mistakes, and try to remember not to do them next time. Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Ginhart, and I'm going to tell you about the live speeches I had the opportunity to attend. The first one was Denial and Skepticism at the Tacoma Community College. The second one I couldn't attend in person because there was no seats, but I did attend via live feed, and it was the first State of the City speech given by Tacoma Mayor Marilyn Strickland. And finally, I had the attending, the privilege of attending the Tacoma chapter of the SGI, or Sokogaki International Buddhist Women's Conference. And I heard the many stories and chants from the women of that chapter. My first speech was Denial and Skepticism, which was hosted by the TCC Muggles. Some of the speakers at that speech were Ralph Hitz, Bernard, and several members of the TC Moguls. They spoke on a variety of different subjects, the scientific method, evolution, global warming, and Holocaust deniers. Now at the time of the speech, we were still really new in class. I didn't know much of what was going on, but I did pick up some things that I probably shouldn't do when I speak. For instance, they were kind of unorganized. I don't know if that was because some of the speakers that they had that were supposed to be there couldn't show up, so they just had some other people fill in their place, but it was something that you could see. From that I learned, if I'm ever going to host a speech like they did, I better learn a little bit about all the subjects in case a speaker doesn't show up so that I'm not up there fumbling. I also noticed some of the speeches didn't take it really seriously. One of them even sat on the desk, crossed his legs, folded them, kicked them back and forth. And I was like, wow, Phil was with us. And I looked over to him and I said, I don't think they're supposed to be doing that. And he looked at me and he goes. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't the only one that was noticing things that were wrong. I was like, okay, I'm picking up a little bit of something. I learned from that that when you're given a speech, always maintain a professional appearance. Always maintain your professional grounds because everybody's looking at you and they're looking at you for guidance. So without, if you're sitting here looking like a bum, then they're not gonna take you seriously. But everything wasn't bad. Some of the good things they did, they definitely owned their space. They used the whiteboard that were behind them. They had power slides, they had pictures, the guys walked back and forth. You know, they really owned that space. So that showed me, <coughs> you don't have to sit behind the podium and be like, okay, I'm really nervous. You gotta own your space and let people know that this is something you're excited to do. This is something that you want to do. And yes, they did say ums, and they said a lot of uhs, but they went through it and they got on it. In my opinion, it was kinda, kinda messed up and not very organized, but I did learn a couple things from it. It made me think of the natural speaker when he said, that as an informative speaker, it is to arouse the interest of your audience. In my opinion, they didn't arouse my interest that much. I felt more confused and enlightened. 
My second speech was a state of the city speech given by Mayor Strickland at the Pierce County Convention Center. Some of the things I liked about her speech is how she opened up with who she'd like to thank. Usually you thank the people at the end, but in her speech she thanked everyone in the beginning. So that showed me that she really had a strong feeling about these people and that she wanted to tell them that, you know what, it was your thoughts and your ideas that is putting this very first in the city of Tacoma's speech. They've never had the state speech before. In her speech, she goes on to describe all the qualities that the city of Tacoma possesses and that the people that live there possess. It showed that she really cared about the city of Tacoma and she was really looking forward to making all the changes for it. She talked about how in 2011, their focus was on going green and beautifying the city of Tacoma and how they're helping small businesses by eliminating the city B&O tax for any businesses that make less than $250,000 a year. And I don't know if you guys know this, but 2010 was a hard year for businesses in a lot of places. In Tacoma alone, they lost 1,080 businesses, closed their doors. But because of City of Tacoma's strive to help small businesses, 2,300 opened their doors. So they're actually in the green for doing more businesses open than closed. Mayor Strickland also added her own flair in her speeches. She told us that the audience, that she lived in the downtown area, and she was really excited that they're getting a supermarket down there because she's always having to drive 20 to 30 minutes just to get her groceries. And she said, she couldn't do that anymore, so her most excited experience was that they're getting a supermarket that was less than a five minute walk. And she got really excited about that. She also added inflections to her voice when she was trying to make her points. And that shows how she ignites the crowd and she got the audience in with her and made them excited for what she was speaking about. After watching her speech and all the new ideas, it made me think of The Building Business of Sex by Dr. Phil Vendetti this quote, a new idea is like fresh bread. It's pretty sure to go stale if I don't do something with it quickly. I thought of this because I always have all these ideas of what me and my son can go do, of how we can help the community. But I never act on them, because I'm usually too busy, or I forget what I was talking about. But if I just take five minutes to write down what I was thinking about, I can do it that weekend or the next day. <coughs> Finally, I had the opportunity to go to the SGI Women Conference. This was a truly enlightening experience for me. I've been studying Buddhism since I came back from Iraq the second time because I needed something to help me really calm down. I found that I felt at peace when I chanted the White Terror Mantra. In the Buddhist Goddess of India by Miranda Shaw, which is this book right here, It states, Tara is the universal mother who nurtures, assists, and protects all seekers on the spiritual path. I have never gone to a Buddhist temple, nor have I ever meditated or chanted with anyone else other than by myself. So being invited was such a true honor for me. Being able to go into their fold and see how these women really give up this enlightenment and this great aura about them. While there, I've shown how to properly let go and meditate, because if you don't know, I do have ADD, so I can never just stop thinking completely. I'm always go, 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 go. There are so many women on different walks of life, and all they wanted to do was share with me on how to reach that enlightenment, how to let go of the things of my past and my fears and live in the now. Something I did notice was when these women did go up to speak in front of a lot of us, there was about 150 people there, not a single one of them seemed nervous. Not one of them had the jittery look to them. None of them were red. They all seemed very calm. So of course, you guys know me. I had to ask them, how do you guys do that? And they laughed. And they said, what's the worst that any of you can do? She's like, are you gonna throw rocks at me? <laughs> no. Are you, gonna, are you gonna laugh? She said, the worst that can happen is I stumble on my way up there. I just laughed and I said, that's true. So today, I hope you guys can tell I'm a little bit more relaxed and I'm happy that I'm here speaking to you guys and get to share my experiences. So you heard the live speeches I went to, to say them again, the denial and skepticism at the TCC, the Tacoma Mayor Strickland city speech, and of course the SGI women. I told you what I 
liked and what I didn't like about the speeches. So I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes. Be who you are, say what you feel. Because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. And that's by Dr. Seuss.